Hi, I'm Leslie Hirschberger, and we're going to be doing an Enneagram short on type 1 today. Uh, before I do that, if you look down and uh, click subscribe, and then you'll be able to get all of the uh, upcoming videos. And I'd also appreciate if you could share them on Twitter, on your Facebook feed. Uh, I'm also, you can find me on Instagram, Leslie Hirsch. And I have some Enneagram content in there, actually a lot of Enneagram content, but there's also it's my personal Enneagram, uh, Instagram page as well. So this happens, I cannot tell you how often it happens, that I start seeing the same Enneagram type. I start getting like a wave of the same Enneagram type in my office. And lately it's been type 1. And I know there doesn't look like there's any order to these videos, and I tend to make them when I feel inspired to talk to this type. <laughs> because then it's like you're in my heart. And with the ones, one of the things I can see or that it's just really hard to watch sitting over here is this tenacious desire to be uh, better and also watching you um, work with the inner critic. We all have an inner critic. Every type has an inner critic, but yours is particularly amplified and it's, um, it's really, really hard to silence. You're an honest and responsible improvement oriented personality. And it's so deep that only um, perfect people are worthy of love and respect. And that sounds like cognitively, and this is the big difference between working with things in three centers and just reading a book about it, watching a video about it, is because cognitively you know that doesn't make any sense because nobody's perfect. In fact, you're probably the ones who fill out an evaluation and say, you know, I'm not going to give someone a five because nobody's perfect. Yeah, four, you know, one out of five, I'm not going to give them a five. No one's perfect. All right. So you know that. And in fact, so often, I can't tell you how often perfectionists have said to me, oh, I can't be a perfectionist. I'm not perfect. So you're habitually focusing your attention on good, better, best. And it's not like a three in order to get that hit from out there that I'm valuable because I'm a winner. No, it's about being right. It's about being um, good. Um, and inside of you, there's this, there's this kind of shadow self that says, I'm not good. I'm not that good of a person. I'm not that good of a partner or a daughter or teacher or friend or whatever it might be. And you're constantly wanting to hold yourself to this really high standard and hold others to this high standard. And this is driven by anger. Now, mostly ones are going to say, I, I don't understand how I'm an anger. Don't feel anger, but start looking at anger's children. And some of anger's children are irritation, annoyance, resentment. Um, and it can also show up as guilt that whatever is wrong doesn't meet my you know, high internal standards and I'm mad at myself. I have these high standards, I'm mad at myself. I should have done it better. I could have done it. Why did I park there? Why did I do that? Why did I say this? So challenges, obviously, are going to be a certain rigidity is going to develop as you try to follow this correct path. And there's going to be inner critic and judging of others, judging of the environment, judging of situation. So every Enneagram type has its own idealization, avoidance, and defense mechanism. So almost look at it like this, that you've got the idealization, the avoidance, and the defense mechanism sits over here, and that's the gatekeeper. So your, your idealization is, I am correct and good. That's the ideal you shoot for. That's the ideal you have to be. It's the idealized self. It's very strongly identified with it. Your avoidance is error, doing it wrong, being wrong. And the defense mechanism is a little squirrely for people to understand. Like, what is reaction formation? And on a very elemental level, it's just saying the opposite of your real feelings um, or your behavior. So an example would be, you know, being really friendly to someone because you really don't like them. You have a most visceral response to them. And so you might be extra, extra warm because, you know, I'm a good person. And so I'm going to be warm and I'm going to be nice and I'm going to be polite. At another level, it could be not wanting to eat something, you know, saying, oh, I don't eat sugar. I don't eat sweets. I knew a one who would, you know, would say, I don't like sugar. I order all the salads on the menu. And in the meantime, She's eating dessert off, off of her friend's plate, but she didn't order it. So it's so unconscious. So that's reaction formation. And the tricky part about it is that it's happening beneath conscious awareness. You can start observing it now that I've named it, and you can start noticing, when do I do that? You know, and dig a little bit deeper. You know, 
the practices for you is that understanding that rightness and correctness aren't part of the natural order. You know, a lot of times you can, you know, I say to ones, go outside and see if you can move that tree slightly to the right. You don't go in nature and do that. You just appreciate kind of the chaos of nature, the chaos and the order. It's both. Paradoxical thinking is good for you. And paradoxical thinking is holding almost opposites and seeing what is each one of these opposites trying to say. Eat healthy might be one of them. Eating healthy can be a good thing. I feel better. Um, I feel more alive. I have more energy. All right. Eating unhealthy, right? Sometimes a little sweet feels good. A little bit of sugar. Um, sometimes enjoying a dinner and a night out kind of relaxes me. Um, so holding, and it can even come to certain ideas about how you see the world. Start trying to work with something that you really demonize and push out there and say, what, what could be um, something valuable in what they're trying to say? What could be something good underneath that? So it's holding um, paradoxical thinking. Another practice that's important for you is self-compassion. I would say that it's the first practice with ones. When they come in and they sit in here, so much of there's just this kind of intense beating themselves up and recognizing and minimizing that internal critical voice, how it gets, you know, dumped on yourself, how it gets dumped on others and cut others a break. And I, I have to tell you, this has become a big part of what I've been working with when I'm teaching other people is that everyone else is also walking around with a type. And there's this tendency we have when we're working on ourselves to place an ideal of how others should be. Well, they should know better. And we can hold others to such a high standard that they constantly can feel like somehow they're letting us down. People can also kind of sense when they're being judged and sense when they're being criticized. Sometimes it's when you start acting particularly nice because people can feel that reaction formation. So pay attention and start allowing space for gray, even in people that you don't like and you think that are, who are doing it wrong. So what about if you're in relationship with a one? Well, there's ways you can actually soften the system of this kind of highly rigid thinking. And humor is one of them. Having um, playfulness, encouraging your one to play with you. Um, music, music opens the heart. Art, beauty, all of those things can kind of soften. Also speak respectfully. Make sure no one feels foolish. Ask for permissions. Understand protocols. Ones are part of the, uh, the, you know, in the work triad. Um, they're the ones who are called the cooperators. They want to, they want to know the policies, the protocols, the rules. Respect that. That's what they bring to the table. Yes, it can get overly rigid, and there's a value in it as well. Also, maintain your own interests. One are fine with that. Ones that love their time tend to love their time alone. They can work long hours on their own, and they're good with you having your own interests. They're detail conscious, so small gestures are appreciated. A thank you note, handwritten, you know, being on time, remembering their name or remembering a detail in the conversation that they shared, um, giving proper instructions, say, of proper instructions or directions, avoid power struggles. Ones like to be right. And so they're part of the body triad, and they can get in this struggle and get in a tenacious, rigid way of, of, of doing things. I've been in, in relationships with people, ones who've been working on themselves a really long time. And I can bring something to the fore of an issue that I might have been having with them, and they can go for the jugular and hit and hit hard. Because somehow it's, it's, it ignites the inner critic really, really hard. It's going to come at you that you are wrong because if you are not wrong right I must be wrong so they, they can attack it can they can attack hard and then feel guilty about it or feel sort of a righteous indignation around it so I would encourage an avoidance of power struggles get curious about where they're coming from because ones can carry our lot a lot of our projections of our own inner critic we project onto other ones the things that we are criticizing inside of ourselves so it's really helpful to notice that um, also admit error, admit your part, admission clears the air. So, you know, trying to be, again, remember if you're thinking that there's one right way, it's helpful for one to have you show up and say, yeah, you know, mea culpa, you know, this is a part that I did and I'm really sorry about that and speaking from the heart. 
So that's kind of a, a, a short on ones. Feel free to add comments. If you're a one, I would love to hear from you and other people would love to hear from you too. And also remember that as you comment on these videos, there's human beings. So if your mom was a one and you struggled with your mom or a parent or a sibling, make sure that there's other ones on the, to remember there's other ones on the path who might be reading this. And when you comment, speak from the heart. Um, um, we're in this together. We're all working on ourselves together. So let me know if there's anything else you want to say. Thanks.